many professionals use the concept of mean in real life. For example, teachers take the average of the test results to see if the average marks are high, in between or are low. Absolute deviation further helps to see the difference between each of the marks and the average marks. This can help the teacher see if the test was too hard, too easy or just right. Let us learn the method to find the mean deviation of grouped data. The mean of the deviations of observations from a fixed central number, a measure of central tendency, is called the mean deviation. You might have already learnt how to calculate the mean deviation about the mean and median of ungrouped data. Let us quickly revise the steps involved in the calculation. The mean deviation of any set of data can be calculated in exactly three steps. First, find the central tendency of the observations. Next, find the absolute differences of each observation from that central tendency. And lastly, find the mean of those differences. Now, if we have an ungrouped data set with n observations such as x1, x2, up to xn, the mean deviation of the data from a central tendency A can be calculated as summation over i that varies from 1 to n modulus of xi minus A the whole divided by n. Now that we've learned the steps to calculate the mean deviation for ungrouped data, let's see how it is done for discrete frequency distribution. The steps involved in the calculation are similar, except for a small change in the formula. The mean deviation of a discrete frequency distribution is calculated as the summation of the product of frequency and deviation divided by the sum of frequencies, that is, if you have a discrete frequency distribution that has observations x1, x2 up to xn with frequencies f1, f2 up to fn respectively, then the mean deviation about a central tendency A can be calculated as summation over i that varies from 1 to n, fi times modulus of xi minus a the whole divided by the summation over i that varies from 1 to n fi. Next, let us move on to the case where the data is grouped into class intervals. If the data is given in discrete class intervals, the upper limit of a class interval is not equal to the lower limit of the next class interval. The first step is to convert them into a continuous frequency distribution. First, for this conversion, find half of the difference between the upper limit of a class interval and the lower limit of the next class interval. Now subtract this from the lower limit of the discrete class intervals and add this to the upper limits so that the class intervals are continuous. Once you have a continuous frequency distribution, the steps involved in calculating the mean deviation is similar to that of a discrete frequency distribution. The only difference is that the midpoints of class intervals called class marks are used instead of discrete observations. That is, the class marks are considered as the observations x1, x2 up to xn with frequencies f1, f2 up to fn respectively. Then the mean deviation about the measure of central tendency can be calculated as the sum of the products of fi and modulus of xi minus a, the whole divided by sum of the frequencies. Now that we've learned how to calculate the mean deviation of grouped data, we are all set to jump into trying them in a data set. Before that, let us quickly revise how to calculate the measures of central tendencies, mean and median of a grouped data because that is our first step in the calculation. Let us start with finding the mean. 
If we have a discrete data set with the observations x1, x2 up to xn, with frequencies f1, f2 up to fn respectively, then the mean is the sum of the products of fi's and xi's divided by the sum of the frequencies. That is for this discrete frequency distribution, the fi, xi's can be calculated. Now their sum is 1610 and the sum of fi's is 35. So the mean is 1610 divided by 35 that is 46. The rule remains the same when we have a continuous frequency distribution. The only difference is that we consider the class marks of each class interval as xi. So for a continuous frequency distribution, the fi xi's can be calculated by taking the class marks as the observations. Now their sum is 700 and the sum of fi's is 20. So the mean is 700 divided by 20, that is 35. This method of calculating mean is called direct method. This calculation can be simplified by subtracting an assumed mean, a number somewhere in the center, say 30. Now subtract this number from each of the observations. Let us take the new variable after these substitutions as yi's. Now multiply these yi's by the frequencies. The sum of the fi times yi's is 100 and the sum of fi's is 20. Later, the subtracted center number is added to the obtained number to nullify the effect of the subtraction. So the mean is 30 plus 100 by 20, that is 35. This method of calculating mean is called assumed mean method. If the class intervals are too large to handle so many calculations, then the step deviation method can be helpful. Calculation can further be simplified by dividing those differences we got by the class size, 10 in this case. Let us take the new variable after these substitutions as ui's. Now multiply these ui's by the frequencies. The sum of the fi times ui's is 10 and the sum of fi's is 20. Later, the obtained number is multiplied by the class size 10 and the assumed mean 30 is added to nullify the effect of the operations. So the mean is 30 plus 10 by 20 times 10, that is 35. This method of calculating mean is called step deviation method. Next, let us quickly revise how to calculate the median of a continuous frequency distribution. Let us find the median of the very same data. The first step in calculating the median is to find the cumulative frequencies. Here the total frequency is 20. Median class is the class interval that contains the cumulative frequency which is just greater than or equal to the half of total frequency. In this case, half of the total frequency is 10 and the cumulative frequency which is just greater than 10 is 16. So the corresponding class that contains cumulative frequency as 16 is 35 to 45. So the median class is 35 to 45. Now the median of a grouped data can be calculated using the formula median is equal to L plus N by 2 minus CF divided by F times C where L is the lower limit of the median class, N is the total frequency, CF is the cumulative frequency before the median class, F is the frequency of the median class, and C is the class size of the median class. So the median is equal to 35 plus 20 by 2 minus 9 
by 7 times 10 which is approximately equal to 36.43. What about finding the mean deviation about the mean for the continuous frequency distribution we dealt with before? Since we have already calculated the mean as 35 for the data, the absolute deviations of each of the observations from the mean can be calculated. Next, each of the corresponding frequencies can be multiplied with these deviations to find the values of each fi times modulus xi minus x bar whose sum is 190 and the sum of fi's is 20. Finally, the mean deviation is the sum of these products divided by the total frequency that is 190 divided by 20 which is equal to 9.5. In a similar way, we can calculate the mean deviation about the median as well. Though we have already calculated the median as 36.43, for the calculation purpose, let us round it off to 36. Now, the absolute deviations of each of the observations from the median 36 can be calculated. Next, each of the corresponding frequencies can be multiplied with these deviations to find the values of each fi times modulus xi minus capital M, where capital M is the median, whose sum is 188 and the sum of fi's is 20. Finally, the mean deviation is the sum of these products divided by the total frequency that is 188 divided by 20 which is equal to 9.4. Let us summarize what we have learned in this video. The mean deviation of any set of data can be calculated in exactly three steps. First, find the central tendency of the observations. Next, find the absolute differences of each observation from that central tendency. And lastly, find the mean of those differences. If you have a discrete frequency distribution that has observations x1, x2 up to xn with frequencies f1, f2 up to fn respectively, then the mean deviation about a central tendency A can be calculated as summation over i that varies from 1 to n, fi times modulus of xi minus a the whole divided by summation of fi's. If the data is given in discrete class intervals, it should be converted into continuous frequency distribution for finding the mean deviation. For continuous frequency distribution, the midpoints of class intervals, class marks, are used instead of the discrete observations for calculating the mean deviations. Do you know biologists use the concept of mean deviation to compare the differences in the weight of the animals and to decide what a healthy weight of an animal should be? We learn more about mean, median, mode in our upcoming sessions. Keep imbibing. We believe in you.